Good morning, this is Ed Habeshar from Claremont, Florida. It is March 9th, 2014, and we are finally underway with the Brandeis South Virginia softball game. Uh, Brandeis just finished its game with Penn State Berend on an adjacent field and came over with a short warm up. And it, we're underway. South Virginia is the home team in the field right now. Pitching for the Seahawks is number 14, Nicole Parry. Catching is number 21, Genevieve Benoit. Uh, first batter for the judges, Amanda Genevieve, led off with a bunt single back to Parry at the circle. I'm joined on our broadcast once again by our Associate Athletic Director, Kelly Scaffarella. Welcome, Kelly. Well, welcome to you, Ed, on this very sunny, warm Florida morning. I'm caffeinated. I had two <laughs> cups of coffee, not one. So thank you, Panera. I don't know if so, I should be so saying that over the air, but thank double, you. Double the coffee from last year, uh, la yesterday. Absolutely. So I'm feeling great. Genevieve has now stolen second and third. Nobody out here in the first inning. Yeah, Ed, you know, we have uh, the good old battery out there, Nicole Perry pitching to Genevieve Benoit. Uh, great friends off the field, and on the field they have great chemistry as well. And uh, looking to see uh, how they fare against another New England team. Susie was playing shallow out in center field, and the ball struck by Novotny cleared her head and picked up by Katie Napier playing right field for the Seahawks today. I think right now, coming out of the chute, we need to take a deep breath and uh, get our bearings. I think uh, they've been sitting around for a little bit, waiting for this game to start. So I think once they calm down and get some pitches and some fielding under their belt, they're going to be just fine. This morning's game was listed in our schedule at Hancock Park. Also in Claremont, Florida, uh, when we arrived at Hancock Park, uh, we didn't find the judges who we knew had a 9 o'clock game against Penn State Barron. Uh, and then we were told, head on over to NTC Complex, where South Virginia will have its game with the Brandeis judges at 11 a.m. at Field 3. When we got here, a nice setup. We're in a raised location on top of a, a center pavilion. Uh, so we're able to have the camera back away from the fence a little bit. We can see more of the field with our camera, uh, and we can we can provide the audio for you. Right now, Corey uh, Coleman is up to bat, trying to bring home number 23, Danielle Novotny, on second. She took a big swing at a great pitch by Perry right now, Ed, huh? Oh, she got her again, swinging high. That was not a strike, but fooled Coleman and she's down on strikes. Got number 21 coming up now, Melissa Nolan, who's listed as a pitcher and first baseman. Today she'll be, she'll be playing first base for Brandeis. Perry's first pitch to where was the ball. Benoit, the catcher, does a really nice job framing the pitches, so I'm looking forward to seeing her work with Perry out there today. And whatever that pitch was, she got uh, number 21 to swing. We're seeing some other teams down here that we're familiar with. Uh, saw Coast Guard get a nice win earlier against College of New Jersey. Brandeis was playing Penn State Barron beforehand. Uh, Brandeis from Waltham, Massachusetts. Ed, Nicole Perry has gotten this uh, Brandeis team swinging early. Um, which is nice to see. They're chasing some pitches that uh, they shouldn't be chasing, so that's a good sign. Of course, got the game one start yesterday. Seahawks were successful with a 13-2 win. She struck out 12 in that victory. Has one strikeout in the first inning today. Ball gets away from Benoit on that one. Novotny advances from second to third. 
going to be a wild pitch on Parry. On deck for Brandeis is Anya Kember. You know what? We have some really good fan support today. A lot of parents flying down, getting out of the cold and into the warm, and uh, who knows? Salve. Who knows? Maybe they brought the good weather with them. Let's hope they bring the good weather back. <laughs> yes. Here comes the pitch. Nolan finds the hole up the middle. Novotny comes in from third scoring. That's three hits this inning against Parry. Two runs in. Again, I think that Salve needs to take a deep breath. Like I was saying yesterday, go back to the basics and play their game. Not the opposing team's game, but their own game. And Perry just did that. She threw a great fastball down the center and got Camber swinging on the first strike. Camber is the judge's shortstop. Second swing and a miss. Look to Perry to mix it up a little bit. Yesterday, she really liked that uh, outside corner. Let's see if she goes to that today. Fall back just on top of the screen. Again, we're protected by a nice netting across all four fields here. All four fields at the NTC complex are softball only. In contrast to the Mineola Park complex, which was just two softball diamonds and then a baseball 90 foot uh, dimension field and a little league field. Harry tried to pitch out high, trying to get Camber to swing, but she did not. Here comes the next pitch. Swinging popped up back and. Oh, ooh. I got it. If I had a glove, I could have caught that in. I think I could still have some softball skill in me. You left. have a lot of souvenirs after. You know? Must have made its way on the other side of the, the netting because it didn't come back. Brandeis enters today's game with the Seahawks 5-0. and They won two games, four games back in, in the North Country. Uh, swept a pair from Newberry College. Those games were played at the Hampshire Dome in Milford, New Hampshire. And then they also swept a pair from Southern Vermont, also at the Hampshire Dome. That ball drops in front of Katie Napier, who gets it in quickly to shortstop Marissa Simpson. I know that this is not the start that Salve was looking for, but I think it's very good to face a team like Brandeis because these are the type of games that are going to prepare you for the end of the season. So this is a great learning curve, especially for a lot of those freshmen out there because Coach DiPolito has quite a bit of young talent out there and freshmen starting. So I think this is a great thing for them. See what they can do to get out of this first inning. We've got a 2 nothing score for the judges batting in the top of the first. Third baseman Madison Sullivan is at the plate. She takes a cut. It lands in Genevieve Benoit's glove. Strike. Sullivan is from Dover, New Hampshire. The Live Free or Die State. Do you know the Live Free or Die State does not? You don't have to wear seatbelts? There's no law for seatbelts. Literally, live free or die. I, I just, it amazes me. I like that law. Yeah, I don't know. Why legislate intelligence? Well, you know, they stand by their motto, yeah. I guess, you know? Live free and die then. <laughs> <laughs> that was a ball from Harry. Not quite the start I think she was looking for, but she's the type of player, Ed, that she'll come back stronger. This will motivate her. Ball gets away from Benoit. Runners oh. advance. Yep. Runners at second and third. Is that a wild pitch? 
Sullivan gets back. Camera, the on, camera on second, Nolan on third for the judges. Here comes the pitch by Perry. A little high and outside. I think she's trying to get those calls that she got yesterday. And you know, the thing about the umpires is they change from game to game. So you have to find out what the umpire is looking for at each game. Ball four to Madison Sullivan. She takes first base. The ball got away from Benoit, but she retrieved it quickly to prevent any run from scoring. Bases are now loaded. With bases loaded, we have number five, Madison Gagnon, coming up. She's from the other coast, West Lake Village, California. She's the catcher for the judges. One out here in the top of the first. Judges already have two runs across the plate. Two nothing lead with the bases loaded. Gagnon looked at that first pitch as a strike. Perry got her swinging on the second one, so she's got a quick 0-2 count. Big thanks to the sports information director at Brandeis, Adam Levin, providing his roster earlier on in the week for today's game. I'm going to give Adam a round of applause. That's nice, you know. Every little bit of help with sports info directors, you know. Gagnon took a swing, but very foul along the right field line. He must be proud to have a 5-0 softball team at the moment. Speaking of winning records right now, our men's uh, Salve baseball team in Fort Myers is 2-0. They swept a pair from the Mariners of Mitchell College yesterday. Let's like talk about that in detail. Ball gets away from Benoit. And Nolan comes home with the th third run of the inning. Coach DiPolito is probably going to look to take a, a walk to the mound if uh, they can't get this next out. Benoit goes out to the mound to talk to Perry. While well, we have this moment, I'd like to give a shout out to Sarah Nelson's grandfather, Lloyd. I believe he is in South Carolina. Uh, I was told that he is listening. So, Grandpa Lloyd, we say hello to you from the press box. Hello, Lloyd. Thanks for joining the broadcast. And if there are any other family members listening, please let the, uh, the athletes know. We'll give you a shout out, too. We are very family friendly here. Sarah Nelson is patrolling left field once again for the Seahawks. Sarah Nelson had a great day yesterday, Ed. Good fielding, four, great hitting. Four RBI in the first game. Here comes the pitch. That ball finds the middle of the infield and gets through. Brings home only one run, but Gagnon reaches second on the throw to the back of the infield. Coming up next for Brandeis is number seven, Madison Hunter. Another West Coaster from Parker, Colorado, Legend High School. Here's the pitch by Perry. It's in for a strike. Hunter is the left fielder for the judges. Again, they just finished a game with Penn State Barron. I don't know the final score, but uh, they came away victorious. So they're 5-0 and now. Perry got that strike on that outside corner. She likes that pitch, and if the umpires will call that pitch, you're going to see her throwing it more often. Strikeout by Perry, which is exactly what she needed. So now let's see what she does next with this next batter, number three, Lee McWilliams. She's from Billerica. Or Bellarica Mass. I don't know. I know I people say it two different ways, so 
I apologize if I am saying it wrong, but I'm going to say Billerica. I'll go with whatever Hall of Famer Tom Glavin says. That's his hometown. All right. Tom Glavin, I, when I was working at Northeastern, his brother, uh, Mike Glavin, was the assistant baseball coach and now is the head baseball coach at Northeastern University. Great guy. We've got Gagnon at second, Sullivan at third for the judges, McWilliams at bat in a 4 nothing game. Sal Virginia looks to get the final out of the top of the first so that they can come up to bat. McWilliams got a piece of that one. In center? Susie's under it. Makes the final out. For the judges in the top of the first, four runs, five hits, no errors, two left on base. We'll be back after this short break. Here at the NTC Complex in Claremont, Florida, the Seahawks and Judges play on field three of the four field configuration. Sal Virginia gets his first at bat against the Judges. The batting order for the Seahawks is Susie in center, Simpson at short, Adine at second, Benoit at catcher, Harry pitching, Nelson in left field, Fountain at first base, O'Reilly at third base, and Napier getting the start in right field. Susie is stepping up into the uh, batter's box, and you know, I gotta tell you, Ed, I really love the way this freshman plays. Uh, Susie is uh, playing center field, and she's from Northeastern Mass, Northeastern Mass, I'm sorry. Be great to get this first uh, batter on base. In yesterday's two games, Lexi collected one hit and eight at-bats. She was at the top of the order in game one in a 13-2 win against Houghton, and then uh, Coach DiPolito switched her to the second place in the lineup against Elizabethtown. The great thing about Coach DiPolito's team is that there are many players that can play different positions. So if something isn't working, She's not afraid to pull that trigger and say, okay, we're gonna try something different. And now's the time to figure out what works. That's what spring training's all about, Ed. Four freshmen are in today's starting lineup for the Seahawks. Susie reaches base, error on the second baseman. Yeah, McWilliams just couldn't, couldn't handle that, uh, that hit to her. Hit really well, hard, hard hit, and Susie ran down that line, so. I like the way the Seahawks are starting right now. That brings senior shortstop Marissa Simpson. Simpson played both games yesterday in right field and, and moved to shortstop today. Coach DiPolito is look, really looking for Simpson as a senior captain to step up and fill roles that uh, might not be her traditional role, but because she's versatile, that's where she's going to be the strongest. So we're really hoping Simpson has a breakout uh, game at shortstop today. Plus, playing in the 
batting in the number two spot often means she's called on to sacrifice, which she attempted to just there, but just got under it and popped it up to the third baseman. One out here in the bottom of the first. Susie on first base, and now Jenadine coming to bat. I really like this player. Adine is, again, another senior, another captain, consistent player. Um, she brings a lot of experience, and uh, she's very calming to the rest. They call her the mom. She is the team mom, and she she owns it and loves it. So uh, a shout out to Mama Dean, number eleven. Mama Adine. <laughs> Sal Virginia today is playing in their white uniforms. Adine bounces back to the pitcher who chooses to play to first to get the out. Susie advances to second. Two outs, bringing up the catcher, Genevieve Benoit. Benoit had a great day at the plate yesterday uh, for the Seahawks. And I don't know her actual line, but on base quite a bit. Yeah. Almost hit a cycle. Collected the three hits in game one, uh, single, double, triple. Had four runs scored in that game. I uh, wish we could have taken some of those runs over into game two. We got shut out 7 0, uh, but she also collected a hit in the second game against Elizabethtown. Benoit took a swing at that first pitch. Here comes the second. Holds off, so it evens 1 and 1. Susie advances to third. Pass ball allows that advance. Coach DiPolito is clapping away over there. She is willing this run <laughs> to come on in. It'd be nice to get something on the board in the first inning, uh, especially after getting shut out in yesterday's game, too. Benoit steps back in the box. Here comes the pitch. Ah, uh, head. Whew. Home plate umpire Dan Heacock uh, had the verbal call strike, but didn't make the, uh, the nonverbal gesture until a little while after. I don't think catcher Benoit really uh, agreed with that call all too well. No, she'll, she'll have her chance to uh, frame the same pitch from Parry when we're on defense. Well, she has a 2-2 count. Oh. Goes down swinging to end the top, uh, the bottom of the first. Susie's stranded at third base. No runs for the Seahawks, no hits, one left, one error for the judges. We'll come back after this break. Here in Claremont, Florida, at the NTC Complex, one of the several sites for the Dot Richardson Spring Games. South Virginia University is the home team in today's game, hosting Brandeis University. Uh, both teams from New England making the nice trip to sunny Florida. Brandeis scored four runs in the top of the first. Salve went down uh, after getting a runner on base via an error and got no run scored in, the, in its first inning. And now we're in the top of the first with a four nothing score. Perry's on the mound, getting ready. Let's see what she brings to this first batter, number 31, Amanda Genovese. Oh, she is from North Haven, Connecticut. That is my hometown. Oh my gosh, you gotta go talk to her. I mean, home, you know, I. Get her autograph or give she, her, give her, give her yours. Yeah, yeah, I'm much older than her, but I, 
North Haven, Connecticut, a small town right outside of New Haven. Genovese has some speed because she beat out a first inning bunt back to the plate. And now she actually beat this play out, but took a wrong turn. And on the overthrow, Adine picked it up and tagged her out. It's a good break for Salve right there. Now batting is Daniel Novotny, number 23. I wish we could have spent more time talking about North Haven with oh, Genovese at bat. You know what? We have more to <laughs> I could make time. <laughs> Here comes Perry's pitch. Perry faced all nine batters in the Brandeis lineup in the first inning, so she got the top of the order again to start off the second inning. And Perry's got a favorable count, 0-2. Oh Here comes the pitch. Oh, she's got her. Is that a swing or call? You Cause, know? Because she looked like she offered and couldn't pull back. I'm going to give it a strikeout swinging. I, uh, I would agree. Well, let's see what number 11 Corey Coleman does. Takes the first strike. Coleman was Perry's first strikeout victim in the first inning. Perry's got three Ks now in the game. Ed, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think, I think, <laughs> I think, <laughs> Perry might be finding your groove. We'll see. But I, I, I feel like those two batters were big. To yeah. Me. Second to the second time through the lineup is usually in the hitter's advantage, but hopefully this time it's in the pitcher's advantage. It's a high ball. Coleman did not go for it. She gets her head. Strikeout swinging. All right. Coleman is down on strikes. Uh, and that'll allow Parry to be the leadoff hitter in the bottom of the second for the Seahawks. After one and a half innings of play, it is 4-0 Brandeis. We'll be back after a short break. the second at Claremont, Florida's NTC Complex. Field three, Seahawks and the judges play. Brandeis has a 4-0 lead over Salva Regina. Bottom of the second, and Nicole Perry is the leadoff hitter for the Seahawks. Perry takes the first pitch. It's a ball. Pitcher Robleski is from Florida, so this is kind of like a homecoming for her, Ed. She's from uh, Delray Beach, Florida. Tell me where that is, Kelly. You know, I wish I could. <laughs> I think I it sounds like a coastal town. It does. With the name of a beach in it. So it's not central Florida. No, I, I think it might be on the east coast, the, the Atlantic Ocean side. I think you're right. Look at my geography, huh? Perry takes that pitch for a strike. 2-2 two, two count for Perry. Let's see if she swings. Battle of the pitchers. Perry stepping out of the box. Again, we encourage our listeners and viewers to follow us on Twitter, engage in conversation. We are at SRU Sports Info. Include a hashtag of Go Seahawks, if you will, or 
Seahawks softball. That'll keep the conversations on target. Perry had a full count on her and uh, went down swinging by a good pitch from Obleski. Brings up the senior left fielder and left-handed hitter, Sarah Nelson. Nelson also had a great day yesterday, Ed. Another senior, another captain, which means more experience. But she takes a strike from her bless me there. Sarah Nelson had a triple among her four hits yesterday. Four runs batted in. Sarah Nelson, Bristol, Connecticut, another nutmeg skate. Shout out. I mean, I'm just surrounded by Connecticut love. Uh, again, our nutmeg neighbors, the Constitution State. Why, yes. why don't you guys go by that nickname a little bit more often than nutmeggers?